Hey guys, we're going to be going back for another simple Ostaclear. Uh, this one is going to be pretty budget, but it is using Louise. So this clear is for those of you that have not gotten a kill yet, um, but do own Louise. So the rest of the team is very, very easy to build. So before we start, we're going to go ahead and turn on the attack and magic modifiers just for bonus points. Um, this won't influence the clear at all. It doesn't make the boss any bulkier. We're not taking damage anyway. So this literally changes nothing other than giving you a tiny amount more bonus points. So there's, there's no reason not to do it for this clear. Um, but this is the team we're going to be using. So we're going to use Jessie. She's our passive provoker. She has 100% um, passive provoke naturally. So she'll, she'll eat the counter, I mean the status effects on turn one and the earth attack as well. So she needs 150 fire and 150 earth resist. Other than that, she can skip everything else. She doesn't need any status immunity. She doesn't need any other resistances. Uh, if she gets hit with the hybrid attack on turn one, she'll guts it and survive anyway. So she's fine. So here's the gear she's using. It's all permanent free gear. Uh, very easy to obtain. It's from old trials, from fat chocobo, etc. Uh, Dr. Aiden is going to be for buffing immunity, and that's mostly it. Um, we need someone to buff immunity every single turn. He's a good choice for it. You can use anyone you want, like Lena, Fina, Rena. Pretty much all the healers can do it, except for like Ayaka, because, you know, she's old. But yeah, um, Jade Moon Pendant works as well, if you have it. Um, and he needs to have a combined 200% to Wind and Dark to survive on turn one. Um, we, we have 100 to both. You could use Evasion as well, or Guts. Now he does have Guts in his kit naturally. Um, somewhere in here, if I can find it. Well, I don't see it. He does have it, but it's only 80% chance, and I decided to not rely on randomness for him to possibly die on turn one. So, there we go. Rem is going to be for dispelling our own party. You need someone that can dispel your own party to get rid of the damage over time effect. You could also use something like Myra's Limit Burst that removes negative effects. But we need a way to get the damage over time off of our team. So Naked Rem is going to handle it for us. Um, she has Guts in her kit, so she'll survive turn one naturally. And that's all she needs. She's just going to dispel our party, and that's pretty much it. You can replace her with like the original Luna Freya, um, Realm, Ling. You can use things like Bushido Freedom on your own team, but Rem is one of the easier ways to do it. Elena, just for boosting morale. We're not going to bother with chaining with her or anything like that. She is literally here for her morale skill and nothing else. Um, shift form, I geared her for full evasion because it's very easy to gear her for evasion. So we just used Runaway, Assassin's Vest, and some, some uh, cheap accessories. And she'll, she'll evade the turn one attack and survive. And after that, she's just going to fill morale every turn. Uh, Beatrix in the base form is going to be our support chainer. She's got the Irony's Ring, the Flame Whip Replica for Fyrega, and then the Equip Whip skill. This is all permanent gear. Um, if, if you want to use someone else to chain with Louise, totally fine. Uh, but we want Quad Cast Fyrega as our chaining support. Shift form, she's going to be covering. Um, she needs 150 to fire, and then a combined 300% to wind and dark. So we got 100 wind, 200 dark. That's good enough. Um, it needs to be a minimum of 150 dark, though. So, you know, more is okay, but at least 150 dark, and then 300 combined to wind and dark. So here's the gear we're using, a very cheap gear. Um, Elena Doll was given for free from the mail very recently. Uh, Demon Shield, Demon Mail is permanent, so are the Jolly stuff from the Chamber of Vengeance. And then some uh, permanent trial rewards as well. We're not even using a card. And here's Louise. Base form, give her the TMR or STMR, because that gives her um, the autocast per turn of Philly Morale. Shift form, gear it for, gear it for pure damage. Um, we're using just one copy of her TMR, and then just a, a gun that was given for free for her gun in peril. Uh, she's going to overkill the boss by a tremendous amount. So even though I'm using all cheap gear that was given for free, um, and all this is free free materials, uh, if you don't have all this, you know she's going to still overkill the boss a tremendous amount. Um, and she's full uh, dragon killer, full reaper killer on Odin. All right, let's go ahead and do it. So we're going to build the morale gauge to full before we bother hitting the boss. We're not going to hit the boss with elemental damage. 
at all until the kill turn. So here is the turn one stuff. We're going to go ahead and just use Beatrix to every turn just cover and Shelga for the morale. Elena will dual cast both morale skills. Louise is going to quad cast. We're going to quad cast all four of her modified gear skills on the base form just to fill morale. Rem um, is just going to guard for the first turn. Aiden is going to double cast Operate Full Immunization and Potent Disinfectant. And then Jesse is going to triple. We're going to do Full Breakdown and double cast the Midgar Special. Now Jesse's going to, Jesse's, the whole team is going to survive guaranteed. Louise only has 50% evasion, so she may die on turn one. If she does, actually she won't. Louise has guts, so no one in this team will die. Yeah, we're going to all survive guaranteed. So here we go. People uh, with like, like Louise may evade the turn one attack. She didn't, but there we go. Everyone has guts. We're fine. Okay. Um, unfortunately, Jesse got... Okay, this will happen every now and then. Jesse got confused, but not paralyzed. Um, the boss has a 50-50 chance of using confused or paralyzed three times in a row. Uh, so if the boss decides to do confusion all three times, that's like a 50... 25, that's a 12.5% chance that the boss does confusion three times and does not paralyze your provoker. So if, if that happens, and for example, Jesse would have uh, killed off like herself or something, um, you can either just revive her and try to recover or just retreat and come back in because 87.5% um, of the time, the boss will paralyze your provoker and then you can just cure them with Dr. Aiden. So Dr. Aiden would cure um, your provoker. But anyway, the rest of the team can just repeat. Okay, so turn one is done. Now Beatrix is covering. We're not going to get dispelled anymore. So now, now no one's going to take any damage for the rest of the fight. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put Rem at this point on dispel. So Rem is going to go to leave it to me. And as the first action in the turn, we're going to click Rem for leave it to me. That dispels our own party. All right, Elena is going to go to just single casting morale from now on. After we've been dispelled, we're going to go ahead and put cover back up. Put her bus back up. Jesse can just go back to breakdown and double Midgar special. And Aiden for status immunity. So by dispelling our party... Uh, we remove all the debuffs, but more importantly, we're going to remove the damage over time effect that's going out right now. That was the damage over time effect that is now on the party. So we're going to dispel that every turn. Technically, you only need to dispel it every third turn, but just for the sake of being lazy and click, click and repeat every turn or reload, we're just going to reload, we're going to manually click REM, and then we just click the repeat button. And as you see, the morale gauge is slowly filling. So we're, we're waiting for two things. For one thing, the boss is buffed up. So we, we had to wait for the boss's buffs to go away. So we could kill on turn five if we wanted to. And truth be told, Louise's damage is so high, we could kill the boss right now without, without going for a full morale gauge. But we're going to go for a full morale gauge before, before we kill the boss. So we're going to go ahead and wait for her autocasting to finish. Okay, we're going to reload, click Rem first to dispel the party, and then just click repeat, and morale goes up. So the boss on turn 5 is going to do an attack that pushes the morale really far in his favor. So it's going to go up a little bit. You'll see You'll see when his turn, his turn goes. Yeah, see the boss gains a ton of morale every 5 turns. So this, this is going to be kind of like a wasted turn almost as we, we counteract that morale gain. Once... That finishes. Okay, so dispel our party, and then just hit hit reload or repeat. And yeah, so that 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 turn was mostly just spent um, taking away the boss's big morale boost. Thankfully, he won't he won't do that anymore for a while. Okay, so again, we're just we you know we're we're not in any kind of rush here. We are just slowly working the boss, working the morale down. So we can go for that nice, safe OTK with Louise. Now this strategy also works with uh, with Sky. Same thing. If you want to build the morale up before one-shotting the boss with Sky, you can. 
Okay, so there we go. So we're going to go ahead and get ready for the kill in a moment. So we're going to nail... Okay, so first thing we're going to do, before we do anything, wait for all this to finish. We're going to reload. We're going to use Rem to dispel. But now the Wheeze is going to quad. We're going to field. We're going to incapacitate. We're going to heavy firepower. And we're going to divine arsenal. So do all that with Louise. Okay, and the rest of the party can just repeat as usual. Okay, so we're going to kill him next turn. The, our morale gauge is now at 200%. Okay, so we're going to wait for the autocasting to finish. We're going to shift Beatrix to the base form, where she's using the Irony's ring and the flame whip for quad quadcast. We're going to shift Louise to the shift form for the damage. Okay, we're going to click the morale bar, and then we're going to turn on Resounding Will for the big magic buff. And then Beatrix is going to quadcast Firega. And we're going to use Louise to quadcast Disarming Blaster. And then... Um, or triple disarming blaster and then neutralizing ionic blaster. Now, Louise already broke the boss's spirit with her Magnus, but if you're, for example, using Sky or something, um, and you know you need to imperil and all that, you can use Jesse's LB before you before you kill right here. That's an 87% defense and spirit break and a 120 all imperil. Now we didn't need that for Louise, but if you're using like a different finisher, you may want to do that. And we chain it up. So, um, Louise is going to completely decimate the boss. There's the first skill capping, second skill, third skill, fourth skill. We overkilled by, as you saw, huge amounts. Huge amounts. With a really cheaply geared Louise. We did 1.5 billion. I think the boss, with no modifiers, has something like 500 million. I don't know. I don't, I don't know the exact amount. But in any case, uh, you know, we overkilled by huge, huge and that was with Louise, and Louise is obviously one of the the second best unit, you know, for Clash of Wills. Um, Sky being the only one better than than her. Uh, but that same strategy worked for other finishers too. Um, you can do Zidane, stack him up slowly, and then you know, um, bring someone to imbue Zidane on the kill turn. Use Jesse to dispel and break. Um, Elena, for example, can can imbue um, Holy or something like that. Uh, only do that on the kill turn, though. We don't want to. We don't want to imbue with a bad element like Holy until the kill turn. Or you can bring like you know Bart's or um, the new Moogle, um, Narshi Moogle Mog, or whatever to imbue Wind. Uh, there's a, there's a bunch of options, but there it is. So Provoker, someone to do status immunity, someone to dispel your own team. Uh, we used Beatrix to cover just to make it less gear intensive for the party. You don't need that. You can use resistance gear in your party and skip cover entirely. Uh, and then a big finisher. So, okay. There was a pretty simple way to clear Asta. See you next time.